Well, the engineering library at Stanford is largely bookless. Uh, we have replaced most of the journal collections and the book collections with electronic materials. This is e-books and e-journals. Uh, so about 86% of the collection, the paper collection, has been removed. Instead, we're using digital surrogates. Well, I think for the faculty and students, the major advantage is that the collection is available to them anytime, any place. So if they're doing a sabbatical in Beijing or studying in a dorm room at 2 a.m., they can access the collections of the library in a way that they never could before. In addition, uh, the use of the collection in terms of searchability by keyword is much better than we've been able to do in terms of making the physical volumes available. A lot of, not all of this work, but a lot of this work uh, is now uh, So as you can see, the library is not entirely bookless. Uh, we still do have a number of materials that are not available in digital form or where by use of the materials we've deemed it necessary to keep a physical copy on hand. If the settlement of the Google Books case is uh, approved, which at this point is still up in the air, then it would be possible for Stanford and for other universities to pay um, an institutional subscription uh, fee to get access to those books. And so as many students as wanted to look at the books uh, would be able to do so. I think today, for Stanford or any other digital library to lend more books than they physically possess is at least stretching fair use a little bit farther than most of us would say you can do. His brother is here, another brother is away. So we're enjoying the celebration. Oh, that's wonderful that, you know, I, there was a tremendous effort to.